Hey, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine here in Johnson City today doing the podcast on, it's really a follow-up podcast on my use of a continuous glucose monitor uh, with my special guest. Andy, the PA and son of Dr. Rogers from the Johnson City Clinic of Performance Medicine. <laughs> Note, he was <laughs> he used to be an actor before he became a PA. Can yes, that's true. Nobody wanted to pay me to be an actor, so thank Do God for family business. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, it's great to have you, Andy. Andy's, of course, a, a type 1 diabetic since he was a teenager and... Um, brings a lot of expertise to a lot of the things that we treat at performance medicine with integrated medicine, i.e. trying to find out the root cause of your problem. So a lot of what we treat is, of course, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, Mm -hmm. and insulin resistance being at the forefront of that. You know, we look at hormones, we look at nutrition, we treat a lot of obesity, and, you know, it's... It's difficult to treat obesity. One of the hardest things you'll treat is obesity because everybody's different. Life is not fair. It's not just how much you exercise and how many calories you put in your body. It's so much more complex. But a lot of it does have to do with insulin resistance and what your sugar is Insulin resistance without diabetes. That is what we see more often than anything in this clinic is your A1C is a definition for type 2 diabetes, which is a root cause of, or is is an effect of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means that you're spitting out a lot of insulin that doesn't work well. And as insulin spins out and doesn't work well, you gain and retain fat. In the definition of insulin, it says inhibits lipolysis. That means it prevents fat breakdown. So it stores fat. It stores fat for winter. And we're never in winter. It doesn't matter if it's cold outside. The grocery store is open. So that's what insulin resistance used to be good for. Now it's not. The hard part is that the medications that are great for insulin resistance are indicated for type 2 diabetes more often than not. So if you don't have an A1C, I've had several labs today, A1C is 5%, 4.9%. I will never have that A1C as a patient with diabetes, but their insulin resistance score was through the roof. Their intact insulin fasting was very high, and a C-peptide, which is a break of cleaving off of pro-insulin to insulin, was very high without food. It's going to be impossible to lose weight or to start trending in the right way if you have insulin there all the time, which is why medications for diabetes usually work for these patients. But if you don't if you don't go to an integrative clinic like ours, you'll never be checked for a C peptide or an insulin resistance score. Exactly, and you know that's kind of why I use something called this continuous glucose monitor. For the last two weeks, I just took it off yesterday, and I will go over the results with Andy today. But this is something that Andy's familiar with for decades. He's once he's worn so many of these CGMs to control his sugar to tell how much pump of his insulin needs to go in, et cetera. But so this was, I tend to get a little hypoglycemic. I'm definitely a little bit insulin resistant, even though I'm lean, I'm still a little bit insulin resistant as most people are. And so I learned so much about my metabolism by attaching this thing to my arm. It didn't hurt at all. Andy put it on me two weeks ago. Took it off yesterday. I never felt it was even there. And to take it off, you just rip it off like a Band-Aid. There's nothing special about taking off, which is no. why we didn't do it in this podcast. I didn't even demo. feel it. To me, I didn't feel it. It feels like in. a Band-Aid? felt like a Band-Aid. I showered with it, got it wet, mm-hmm. sweated with it. Never had a problem. I just waved this little monitor in front of it, you know, 30 times a day just to see what it was doing and what the effects of different kinds of foods had on my blood sugars. And I'll tell you what I've learned about myself. Um, Number one, the first week I was in less control than the second week because I learned what I could do. And admittedly, I, I ate and drank some stuff I usually wouldn't do just to see what it would do to my blood sugar. It was really interesting. Even a guy with a guy like me, who's lean and hopefully in shape, um, but that's up for debate. If you'll leave a comment at the bottom of this podcast, we'll actually take a little bit of vote of whether or not you think Dr. Good. Rogers is in shape. Pretty yeah, good. Pretty good for old, <laughs> for an old man. But, uh, in any event, 
Here's some things I learned, and then I want you to go over some of my findings when you look mm -hmm. at the, you scroll through that. But because most of the time I was in range, I think 97% of the time. But what I found was like the first day I had it on, I, I went and drank a caramel macchiato, which is a rare treat for me. I really like them. Just a coffee with the stuff in it. And it popped my sugar up from about 100 to 150 in about, 30 minutes. Um, and then I also went and got a Krispy Kreme donut and I ate one Krispy Kreme donut and it popped it up to like 170. That was my highest rating range or reading was about 172. Um, I drank a little orange juice, which popped it right up. I really found that what I drank really popped it up a lot quicker than what I ate. Now, one time I went out to a restaurant and I ate uh, a good amount of pasta and it really jumped up really high, you know, not diabetic range. Again, I'm not a diabetic, uh, but it really did pop it up. Well, what I learned too was that my insulin response must be pretty good because usually when it popped it up pretty high, within 40 to 50 minutes, I was back down to normal. The other thing I noticed was when I woke up in the morning, I guess I was getting a little bit of that dawn phenomena uh, because of cortisol that wakes you up. My sugars would be up, you know, 105 maybe. Whereas during the night, you can look at it, and I was 80 or in the 70s most of the night. So, And you should be. And, you should be lower at night. You don't need glucose in your system at night because, A, you're not eating, so glucose shouldn't be high. And two, you're not metabolically active. So glucose doesn't need to go into a skeletal muscle cell to do something because you're not moving. So that's a good thing. You want a low rate at night. And it's interesting. Your food choices, too, those are high sugar intakes, which you don't normally do. Most often with something like a Krispy Kreme donut, you'll see a big spike and then you'll see a really quick crash. And the crash is because all these are quick carbs. Those yeah. are very, very quick, highly refined sugars. Caramel, that caramel syrup in a Starbucks is very, very, it is toxic because it's very quick. The base and the milk that goes into it can actually make it last a little bit longer. So if you have a quick carb with a base like milk or something, that uh, that actually makes the carb last longer and actually can prevent a spike too. Interesting. You know, one thing I did notice was that raw, unpasteurized honey, which I really like, did not pop my sugars up. Thinking it would because it's sugar, but it just didn't do it. That's interesting. Uh, so that really made me happy there. Um, but it's, this is a pretty cool little machine. I'll have you go over my results, but this thing is so easy. And I got a free two-week sample of it. I mean, that's all I wanted just to see what it did. Now, diabetics, if, you, if you're a diabetic and you don't have one of these, you're nuts because you're going to get a lot better control of your sugar. It's so easy, no finger pricks really, unless you want to match up controls. You'll probably recommend that. But um, I didn't even do that. I just kind of trusted it. It really... I mean, how I felt really correlated very well with what this thing showed. So what I did, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you scroll through my numbers here. And I'm not sure. It's, it's definitely on here. So okay. you, can, you can look. You can also do this on your phone. But kind of go over my results and, and give me some critique on, <laughs> on how I did. So if you if you have one of these, you can download a report. So the Freestyle has, I forget the name of the application, but they have an application that you can upload your stuff to and you can actually add providers on. I'm a provider on there, so you can actually add your material, invite performance medicine or your primary care or your endo so that they can actually look at all of your stuff because it gives you a daily graph of your sugars. It gives you an average and the most the, the best thing that comes from this is time and target. So time and target, do you want to get back on this? Because you took a, yeah, okay. a different snapshot. Time and target, so you set your target range at the beginning. So you have a low end and a high end of what you want to be in. You, you want to be between 80 and 120, but that depends on when you're drawing that sugar or when you're checking it. You typically don't want to go definitely not over 200 for anything that's post meals, but time and range is better indication of control than A1C, 
A1C just means how much sugar is sticking to the red blood cell. It's a percentage. That is an average. So an average, if you have highs and lows, you're going to average the same as if you're not having any highs and lows. So this tells me exactly the percentage of when you're in this small range. And dad was in 87% of the time. And a recommended time is over 80%. And so I was 80, low. Uh, and so you had below. To, so our target range was 80 to 140. You could have set that bottom parameter to 70 and be fine. Okay. Um, you typically don't want to be below 60 for sure low blood sugar isn't good either because low blood sugar, your brain feeds off of glucose so you want to have some glucose is not the enemy but too much or too little is when it becomes an enemy you're below 10 percent of the time above three percent and then in target range 87 percent. that's awesome so that's pretty good that's that's really that's really really good when you're above range and there's too much glucose in the vessel that's when it cuts and makes injury when it's too low there's not enough to feed the cells that need growth so that's why you don't want to be low or high but we're not robots we're human beings living in the 21st, 21st century? 21st. Thank you. Okay. I'm not. Yeah, that's good. 21st century. We're surrounded by sugar and sugar is very addictive. I was talking to a friend last night too. He's like, I'm just addicted to cookout. I was like, cookout has nothing for you there that is possibly good for you. But it's an addiction. Kind of like McDonald's. Well, to they Maybe add, a salad. I mean, they add flavor. They add flavoring to that. They add flavoring to the actual food to make you want more. Even the salad. Umami. They add umami. Oh, maybe not the salad. But I guarantee you that that one time I did eat a organic. salad. I ate a chicken salad, and it popped up after that. There were some croutons, which I didn't eat many of them, but there that salad popped my sugar up. And it was balsamic, but it was kind of sweet tasting balsamic. Dressing is hidden sugars. Most sugars are just dressings. So if you're going to be very robotic about your nutrition intake, you're making your own, you make your own dressing. And two, you go for um, just oil and vinegar as opposed to something that's compounded. A lot of those dressings are just sugar, unfortunately. Um, you took some snapshots, your scans per day, you scan 23 times. So that means that with this freestyle, you have to scan. It still captures what's in between, but it's only going to give you the readouts of what you actually put forth, but it'll give you trends and what, if you went down or high or low in between, it's got pretty good accuracy. Dexcom is more accurate than freestyle most often, but this is a good thing for people who don't have diabetes or type two. Your daily patterns looked good. So I don't know if you're able to zoom. Are you able to zoom on that? So you notice too that it's low in the night and you want it low in the night. You want it, a it's going to be a little bit higher during the day because you have counter regulatory hormones that are going to increase glucose, like glucagon. Glucagon is going to be higher during the day because you need sugar to be able to do the things you do. So glucagon will absolutely raise your blood sugar. I noticed when I exercise, it would bump it a little bit. It didn't go down. It went up a little bit. There is a rule about exercising. With type ones, there's a rule. It's usually, I think it's the 240 rule. You don't want to be above 240 uh, or else your blood sugar go go up. Before I was diagnosed, my blood sugar was high. I got diagnosed when I was 968, which is dangerous. But I ran the crazy eights and it went higher because I exercised because I needed glucagon and I didn't have any insulin counteracting it. Your average average glucose over the 14 days was 100, so that's good. And you'll notice, too, that this peak kind of matches your circadian rhythm. It should be lower at night and higher during the day. And your sugars are good. 87% time in range, that's, oh, that's awesome. Good. Yep. That's really good. Okay, perfect. And let's see the other snapshots. Uh, Seven-day average was 95. Um, some other funny pictures on here. Um, <laughs> some low, a total of two low events, but your low events, were, did you feel low? No. So, too, it depends. You're 77, so you took a picture of 77. That's considered a low blood sugar because your parameter is 80. 77 yep. is not bad if this is... Felt fine. At 11.38, so you're going towards the evening. Yeah. So it shows it you which, if you're going higher or lower, but... Um, that arrow means you're not trending up or down. Yeah. And two, the severity of the arrow, if it's here, you're not trending a little bit, and then you're trending very fast. Yeah. And it actually gives you a breakdown of what that means. It's five points every 15 minutes or five points every five minutes. So kind of not generally, you know, of course, That's I'm a good. low carb guy and I do intermittent fasting 
which is, I think, why my sugars were so good. I think yeah. intermittent fasting for me has made all the difference in my body fat percentage and and uh, my weight and really the way I feel. Because when I do intermittent fasting, I just don't get hungry. And it's just wonderful for me. You know, There's a good website called Fung Nephrology. He's a nephrologist. He goes over the specifics about why you intermittent fast, but it's all related to insulin. Fasting is just when you break your fast, that's breakfast. So it just depends on when you want to do it. Most people respond really well to it. Yeah, I love the not eating breakfast. I always yeah. thought it was the most important meal of the day. Turns out you don't even need it. You'll do better if you don't eat breakfast, I'm telling you. Why? What did you learn most from this? What was the most interesting part of this? Um, this is such a cool how thing. How quickly that the liquid drinks pop my sugar up. Um, yeah. More so than it just took longer for the pasta or the, the heavier meals when I ate out to pop my sugar up, but I, I got a really good insulin response though, because it returned to normal quickly. So, um, well, and how low sense. it stayed at night, because I don't eat before I go to bed. So it just stayed really even and low. So this it was a great teaching tool for me. And I suggest that if you do have weight problems, if, if you're pre-diabetic or, you know, you've got some family history of diabetes that you get one of these for a couple of weeks and just see how you are. It gives you a lot more information than just drawing a blood sugar or hemoglobin A1C. So uh, the Freestyle Libre, I had a great time with it. Been a I'll fun two weeks. That liquid, though, that is important for you to know. Do not drink your carbs. It is a, it is a waste. And the reason it acts so quickly is that if you look at molecules of carbs from a liquid to a solid, solids are closer together. That's why it's a solid. So it's harder to break down and you have to chew it and it has to go through your gut. And the complex molecules have to be then available to make into glucose. The liquid's already there. Yeah. The kind of like fruit juice way, is worse than fruit. The right. fastest way is if you inhale. You, if you inhale things, then it's going to be the quickest way that you get it because it's aerolized. It's air. It's it's not part of. It's, it's not a particle. So important to know that you quickly responded to liquid. Do not wait. There's not anything good unless you have a low blood sugar. Then drink your carbs. You do not Starbucks. I love Starbucks. I go all the time. Starbucks is amazing. Those drinks you will gain weight if you go. If you think a latte is good coffee. for you, a latte is not. You do not need it. You do not need to add it any time that someone is pumping in something for you. That is where your carbs are coming from. Even if it is sugar free, it is still. It is going to make you want another one. That stuff is not good for you. That's why I don't like artificial sweeteners because they stimulate your insulin response. And, yeah. Uh, the only thing worsen... Ben likes is bunk cakes, okay? And give <laughs> it a rest, all right? It's That's nothing... just once a month. It's I'll eat a once few... a week. There's a lot of things to celebrate. Oh, once a month mm -hmm. <laughs> for nothing bunk cakes. Only if one of the drug reps brings, brings me a small <laughs> slice of one. A small slice. And only he only smells it, them. He you doesn't know, I wish I'd have had one because I really, after I eat one, I do feel bad That's about true. an hour later i feel terrible they're very sugary but sugary. Um, anyway thank you fun. andy so much for coming in uh freestyle libre watch your sugars eat low carb do intermittent fasting come see us if you need uh, a tune-up or to watch to find out what's really going on with you this is dr tom rogers at performance method messing along with andy rogers thank you for PA, having me expert on diabetes and yes. uh I love having to practice with you, Andy. Me too. It's Me awesome. too. Let's make practicing great again. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's pulling. I, I know. That's either hit or miss. I've been saying that joke a lot lately. <laughs> so thanks for having me. Thanks. This is great. See you, see you next week.